China Shop is the story of Mary Woolley and Jeanette Marks, who were pioneers of the suffragette movement and also women who really made a difference in higher education for women and, and equal rights for women. Um, but one of the reasons that we don't hear their story very often is queer erasure. And the story is based on their love letters and their 40 year long relationship. Um, but what they have done for all women women um, is pretty outstanding. So it's just a glimpse into moments in their life um, that are put together into sort of a fast paced whirlwind of a 90 minute show that is both comedic and um, at moments really heart wrenching and inspiring and I think will make people really think about what revolution looks like. The story takes place between the years of 1938 and 1944. It covers a 40 year time period in a time that is, you know, ages away from where we are now in 2022. Um, and it's but it's not really a period piece. The costumes are period, but the language is contemporary. The feeling is contemporary. And that's all on purpose. There are tons of anachronisms in the show. There are moments where you go, mm, that wouldn't probably have happened in the 1930s. But I think the playwright did that to help draw comparisons between the time that they were living in and the time that we're living in now. Uh, the themes of the show and what those women were trying to, you know, get for themselves and for everyone else are still really relevant. There are places where we have achieved a lot in terms of forward momentum, but there are still a lot of places where we haven't. And working on this show has really made us all, you know, have those conversations, which has been a beautiful thing for the cast and crew. And I think our audience will also hopefully kind of watch the show and go, oh, we still have some work to do. So hopefully people will leave with a little bit of a sense of a rallying call. I think it's important to tell this story to today's audience for one, because I did not know who Mary Woolley and Jeanette Marks were as individuals. I didn't, I had never heard of them until I read the play and I was surprised by that and, and saddened by that. Like how in all of my, you know, history classes have I never heard of these women and what they've done. They were literally changing the face of education for women. They were working with presidents like Mary Woolley was in peace talks with Hitler. This is not, she was, this is someone who was doing so many things for not only the school that she was working at, um, but for like our country and I'd never heard of her. And it, it was really heartbreaking, but it is just another example of, of how many stories do we not hear about people because of their sexuality or because of their race or because of their gender. Um, so the first reason I think it's important is that these women deserve to have their story told. Uh, there was literally not a single person that came into the show that knew them before reading this script. So um, I'm excited to, to help tell their story and then it I hope will inspire people to continue to search out other stories that, that should be told. That's the power of theater, I think. That's why I love what we do. It has been such an adventure working on this show with the particular group of people that we have working on the show. Um, one of the things that was most important to me in telling this story was making sure that we had representation from the LGBTQ community. And we do. Our cast and crew are primarily made up of people who can really identify with this story, with um, what these women have gone through. And that has been a really beautiful experience. This this is the first time at RLT in our 87 year history that we are centering a story around um, two women in love. And I'm really excited about that. It is not the whole story, but it is obviously a really important part of this story is that these are women who loved each other for 40 plus years. And um, 
the women who are in the show, I think, are really excited to get to play these pioneers. That's what they tell me. Uh, so, and I'm just excited to be like a part of bringing it to life. It has been really challenging working on this show and every other show we've attempted to produce in the last two years during COVID. Um, just like everything else, we've had to shut down several times. We've had to evolve with the, you know, vaccination requirements, mask requirements. Um, but I am so proud of our company. I'm so proud of our cast and crew for being flexible. We actually were meant to open the show in January and had to push it to March because of COVID. Um, and I'm really grateful that the community is still excited and has been waiting for this show to come out for a while. I hope that it lives up to sort of the build that we've had going on for working on it for six solid months. I think it's changed the way we work. I know I have a tendency to be such a perfectionist and such a drill sergeant and such a like, you know, it has to look like this. And COVID took that away from us. And from me specifically, it's been like a blessing that we are approaching this first with our hearts and first with like checking in to make sure everyone's okay. Super, super proud of that. So it's been challenging, but we're making it. And I cannot wait to share this story with our community. The cast is just doing such great work. And we have powerhouses of actors in our show. Um, Yvonne Kezios is back. And we've got um, Tara Rispin, who's been on our stage before, uh, Terry Gray. But we've also, we're welcoming three new actors to RLT's stage who've never worked with us on a main stage before. And the way that Everyone has just sort of jumped in to say this is a story worth telling and this is a story that, you know, our community deserves to hear uh, and this is a story that deserves to be told is, is just really exciting. So I hope people come out and support it. <laughs>